The SEC's crypto crackdown, Coinbase now under fire. The SEC alleging the company has operated as an unregistered broker since at least 2019. Coinbase, for its part, says this will only hurt America's economic competitiveness. And this comes just one day after the SEC sued Binance. Making Money host Charles Payne joins us now. Charles, it was interesting. I was reading an analyst note, and they say when you receive a Wells notice in March, it's hard to think that you would be surprised as an investor <laughs> to finally then get a lawsuit on your door in June. Micro strategy is the better play, and I was blown away by that note. But what do you mean, th sort of, if you're at home and you're an investor and you're looking at this, are you surprised? Well, I don't think you'd be surprised in general because of all of the negative news and, and dark clouds that have surrounded this entire industry. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, you know, you had the Binance news yesterday. I hate that it comes so close to Binance because I feel like it puts them in the same basket. I don't think they're the same company, right? And, uh, you know, a lot of this is the result of one company, Coinbase, saying, hey, you know, we're not, we, we think we would like Congress or someone to set the rules of the road instead of punishing us for, you know, we're not quite sure what we're doing. Of course, the SEC is saying you're selling unregistered securities. But it is interesting that they would say, okay, going back to 2019, I mean, they went public in 2000, right, in 2021 after that. So there was an opportunity, to, like, you know, it's like as if the Gambino crime family said, we're going public. And, you know, all of a sudden the U.S. Attorney General is like, okay, right. you know, and then three years later. You know, that's an organized crime outfit. You know, it's just, mm. I just feel like everyone's punted on this, and it's unfortunate because I feel like the American consumers, particularly young folks who like the, mm. uh, cryptocurrencies, are getting hurt. Well, mm. co Congress has punted on this. Certainly. But Gary Gensler seems to be taking the opportunity to say, you know what, let's make life difficult for folks in this space. And you look at some of the comments he's had about, we don't need more cryptos. We already have digital currencies. Right, right. It's called the dollar. Right. Mm. That just seems very anti-competitive to me. You don't even have to love crypto to realize that looks nefarious coming from a guy who's supposed to be the referee in all of this. I agree 1,000%. And, of course, when he was a professor, you know, he taught this kind of stuff. He understands he understands better than, to your point, that this is not, you know, that there's – let the marketplace decide on all of this. You know, you have you, – I guess at one point we had 20,000 in these cryptos, but half of them didn't even trade every day. Like, the marketplace, people say, no, this is a crap coin. I don't want it. Right. So let the marketplace decide all of these things. That's not the central issue here. I think the bigger issue, of course, is as we get closer to the central central bank digital currency – uh, and, you know, we've gone through this a period where you have to make your comments and soon they'll take the next step. We know that's inevitable. And we know that the, the, the governments want to usurp the excitement around crypto, but find a way to direct right. it back into uh, something that the U.S. government controls. I'll take the other side of that argument, though, because I do wonder about confidence in cryptocurrency. Because I was taking a look at this, uh, Charles, uh, a Pew Research survey did find that roughly 75 percent of people who had heard of crypto, just heard of it, said that they were not confident mm. that current ways to invest in, trade, or use cryptocurrencies are reliable and right. safe. So I'm wondering, is this a way of actually instilling confidence? No, that makes think? this is a way of making confidence worse. It's, it's designed to, to, erode, to erode confidence. Yeah, if you haven't used crypto, if you don't know anything about it, it seems shaky. You think Sam Bankman-Fried is crypto. You think some of these other right. things that are crypto, but Hey, look at a poll of people who actually buy things like Bitcoin and Ethereum. That's the poll. The people who actually put their money there, they're holding. Mm -hmm. You know, they've been strong holders. They believe. They believe for the long term. So the people who've actually committed, you know, all of this money into this entity, mm -hmm. they're, they're the believers. No one else has to believe in it. They're not called holders, aren't they? H-O-D-L That's right. <laughs> Hashtag H-O-L-D. <laughs> Come on, That's hey, right. You, you know got to have the hands. You can't, can't be paper hands around here. <laughs> Let's get let's get all the hashtags out right now. All right, look, I want to switch gears and go to this, Charles. Republican presidential candidate Tim Scott speaking out after his interview on The View. Listen to this. But more important, both Clarence Thomas and my story have things in common. Number one, it starts in poverty and tragedy, broken lives, broken pieces that are made whole. How are they made whole? This country affords anyone to rise to the level of their character, their integrity, and their grit. We want that story to be sold or told to the American people. Kids trapped in poverty today need to know that you do not have to be the exception. You are actually the rule. Look, he's honing this message. I think he's very good at delivering it. And it's one of those messages that can appeal 
across party lines. What do you think about what Tim Scott? No, I love I love what he had to say. Uh, you know, I just wish Joy Reid was there. It's there's nothing more insulting than a white liberal woman to tell a black man what being a black man is all about. You know, that's just Joy Behar uh, missed Behar, Monday. I'm she sorry. takes yeah, Mondays yeah, yeah, yeah. off. So right. it's just it just it really is infuriating, yeah. uh, particularly for a conservative black man uh, to to have this stuff. Listen. Read the first chapter in Clarence Thomas's book, <sighs> the first chapter about the, 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 the childhood. I cried because I thought about my mom. I thought about my grandparents. I didn't think about political parties. Yeah. I thought about what they went through, what they all have gone through. And the, and, and, and the idea that we live in the greatest country in the world and we've made a promise to become a more perfect union. And we should applaud the fact that we've made tremendous strides toward that. We're not there yet, but the momentum that we have it's ironic that the, the people who keep trying to derail that are the people that smile in your face and act like they like you. They yeah. really don't. Mm -hmm. It's just amazing that a sitting U.S. senator has to go on a show and try to convince people that you can make it in America. That, that, like, no, I'm that, that, yeah, that, that a black person you. can make it in America. And if you do, you're the exception. Yeah. You know, it's like, no, you're, you, maybe if you go through a liberal school, New York City uh, school educational system and make it, yeah. You know, again, we should find out, you know, it's just unfortunate that that there's not enough open minds, but people have ulterior motives and none of it has anything to do with progress in this country. And I think Tim Scott sharing his perspective too really makes him stand out across the stage of GOP candidates too, because it's a message of what's working. Right. It's very positive and optimistic and we'll see how that, it'll be interesting to see how that plays he's out. Going, he's going down that path. Even the way he announced, you know, it was a full of energy, full of mm -hmm. excitement. And, you know, that's a, it is a refreshing path, I, mm -hmm. I think. You know, listen, I, I'm not one, I hate politicians who tell me how bad the other person is. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't care. Mm -hmm. What can you do? Like, you know, like, it's, it's always like, don't vote for so-and-so because they'll do this, right. this, and that. And I'm like, oh, golly, what are you, what is your game plan? On that uh, note, yeah. are we getting enough of an economic message from these candidates, uh. Tim Scott being one of them? I don't know if we get enough of that from him yet. You know, maybe he'll try to identify that later. I think from a more macro point of view, is like, hey, let's become a, a country or a nation that's optimistic because the ethos of our nation, again, coming, you know, from a revolution uh, against what was a, wrong, a system that wronged all people into one where, listen, I always tell people, Tocqueville came to this country to write, a, to do a, a series of documentaries on, on America's prison system. When he left, he was shocked at how, how, Everybody here thought they could make it. Like, it was like, you know, in Europe, if you weren't born into royalty, you'd never be royalty. If you weren't born into the upper class, you'd never be in the upper class. And how dare, by the way, it wasn't flattering. How right. dare these people think that they can be something? Right. You know? right. <laughs> so remember, it's always a literary reference with Charles. Today, yeah. it's Democracy <laughs> in America. A great read. That's awesome. Yeah. And we learned it yesterday from Jimmy Fallon calling it victorhood, not victimhood. That's right. yep. Another sort of good saying that we keep hearing. Charles, such a pleasure Thanks. to have Thank you. Great Thank to see you. all of you. you Make sure that. to tune in to Making Money with Charles Payne. It comes up right after this, 2 p.m. Eastern, after the Big Money Show.